In this session, you will learn more about networking in Azure, how Azure uniquely handles networking, including VNet, subnet, VNix, VPN, and something called ExpressRoute, which is a great way to ensure the privacy and isolation of your data and possibly lower variance on things like latency and packet loss. As an MSP, it is important to really get your arms around how networking works in Azure as you continue to build up your cloud practice. Okay, let's talk about other types of networking that exist. So when you have kind of this internal networking where you have private IP addresses and, um, and NICs attached to VMs, you know, that, that's, there's no bill, nothing billable happening there. However, what you can do is you can also attach public IP addresses to a particular virtual interface, which will then get attached to a particular VM. So for instance, if you take DCL1 again as an example, it will show you that there is a public IP address on this particular v, uh, uh, network interface. And if we go to public IP addresses, so let's do IP addresses, public IP addresses, you'll see a list of IP addresses and it will also show you what they are attached to. So if we were to go to uh, associate it with assignment, pick which one it is. There we go. So you can see that this public IP address object is attached to this virtual network interface, which is attached to a particular VM. This is a static public IP address that has both an IP and the DNS name associated with it. And this is a build object. It gets billed, um, I think, I think like three dollars, maybe a little bit less. Let's let's see. Azure public IP pricing. So a static IP address you get for whatever that is, you know, point four cents per hour. Okay, so that's the cost of a public IP address. Uh, you are getting billed for it as long as it exists. So you have to actually delete it in order for it to stop billing you. We talked about virtual networks, subnets, network interfaces, private IP address and other properties of network interfaces, and public IP addresses, which are resources attached to network interfaces. A couple of other network related uh, constructs. We have our a virtual network gateway, the way VPN works in, um, in Azure is you set up uh, what they call a VPN gateway. It requires you to place it in a particular subnet. So you set up, you carve up another piece of your uh, virtual network for the gateway. You place your gateway in there, and then you're able to add VPN connections into that gateway. I'm not gonna go through it because it, it takes a long time to create one. Uh, but but that's the concept. You add VPN, and there is pricing associated with running VPN gateway. So if you look again, Azure VPN gateway pricing, you will see that there are different types of gateways. Uh, the the cheapest one. Let's look at it by hour. The cheapest one is called the basic. It runs about twenty six dollars a month, and then you have you know gateway one, gateway two, gateway three. It gets up to almost a thousand dollars a month. And the differences are, you can see, are is the, is the aggregate throughput and bandwidth, as well as the number of connections and all that kind of other stuff. So um, there are multiple VPN gateway options in Azure. As far as the actual transfer and bandwidth in Azure, anything that, that goes within the same region, any traffic that traverses resources residing in the same region is uh, free. There is no cost for that. Anything that comes into a region from outside of that region into your resource is also free. The only thing you pay for is egress bandwidth, outbound bandwidth. So if you can see here, we have uh, Azure bandwidth pricing 
and the first five gigabytes per month is, is free. And then if it's outbound data transfer, see data going out of the data center, and then there is this, this pricing per gigabyte. So you have, you know, whatever that is, 8.7 cents per gigabyte of transfer data. So you're not really paying for the bandwidth. It's not in terms of, you know, megabits per month or anything like that or per second. It's in terms of actual gigabytes of data transferred. Okay. Um, if you are using something called availability zones, which we didn't cover yet, then you also pay for inbound traffic, but inbound traffic normally is free. So imagine, I mean, here it says it right there. And imagine you're on a VM and you go in to download some really large file. It, it takes 100 gigabytes to download it. You pay nothing for that because that's inbound. But if you go and take that file and you upload it to some other Azure region or any other location on the internet, you are going to pay for that transfer. So Express Route is a service uh, in Azure that allows you to set up a private point-to-point -point connection with another location or, or multiple locations. So Express Route rides on top of a physical connection. So in order to use Express Route in Azure, you need to use an approved vendor that's one of the uh, you know customers make traditional charger by the server provider to enable connectivity to Express Route. So there is a list of Express Route providers where you can go to, to a carrier, let's say like a Verizon or a Comcast, whoever is on the list, you can rent connectivity from them, physical connectivity from them, from your data center or your physical location into one of the Azure regions. And then on top of that, you would get this express route that would allow you to have private connectivity as opposed to public internet connectivity over that, um, physical line into the Azure environment from your physical location. That's kind of what it's for. It's, it's, uh, it also is built either per gigabyte or you can have unlimited data transfer on it depending on how big the pipe is. So again, as an extreme, if you're using a express route for 10 gigabits with unlimited bandwidth, then you are looking at $51,000 per month that's on top of what a Verizon would charge you to, uh, to have a 10 gigabit capable uh, connection from your location to the Microsoft region data centers. There are a couple of things that, that you can expect to be better. You know, mostly it's, it's about privacy and isolation. It's your own connection. You're not using any VPNs or any other encryption that has to be involved in the process. Uh, and you may have better uh, lower variance on things like, you know, latency and, and, uh, and packet loss and things like that, just like with any point-to-point -point connection.